Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will continue our discussion on chapter one and learn about populations, samples, and sampling techniques. So let's get started. So a population is a set of all objects or individuals of interest, or the measurements obtained from all objects or individuals of interest. So for example, a population of interest might be all students at a college. When we take a sample, we're gonna study a subset of that population. And then if we take a census, we are simply studying the entire population. So let's take a look at an example. Here, we have a population of interest, which is Miracosta College students in the year 2022, totaling 13,921 students. To understand how much sleep they get nightly, we could take a census of all the students, or we could take a sample of 300 students to examine. For most organizations, taking a sample is more efficient and cost-effective than studying the entire population. So alliteration can be helpful when you need to remember key concepts. So here we're gonna use P for population. A parameter is a descriptive numerical measure like an average or proportion that is computed from the entire population. So an example here is the average time it takes Miracosta College students to find parking on campus on Mondays. Another example would be the proportion of all university students in California who have more than $40,000 in student loans. So think parameters as information about the population. And then there are statistics, which is S for sample. When we talk about samples, we calculate statistics from these samples. These are descriptive numerical measures like an average or proportion that is computed from a sample selected from a population. So an example would be the average credits taken by a sample of students at Miracosta College. So rather than studying all of the students, we can select a sample or a subset of the students. So another example would be the proportion of defective phones in a sample of iPhones selected from phones made from Apple. So if Apple wanted to test their phones rather than test every single phone, they would test a sample because it's faster and cheaper to do so. Let's now dive into the different sampling techniques. So on this slide here, this breaks down the different sampling techniques. On the left-hand side here, we have non-statistical sampling processes. These use convenience, judgment, or other non-chance methods. In this video, we'll be focusing more on the statistical sampling techniques shown here. These include simple random, systematic, stratified, and cluster sampling. These methods use selection techniques based on chance. This means every item in the population has the same chance of getting picked. Statistical sampling is more commonly used in practice compared to non-statistical sampling, but this also can depend on the situation. So let's take a deeper look at some of the statistical sampling methods. So simple random sampling is a very commonly used sampling technique. This is where every possible sample of a given size has an equal chance of being selected. Selection can then be done with replacement. This means if I pull a sample of people out of the college, I can put them back in so they could be selected again. Or we can do it without replacement, meaning once I pull a sample out of the population, they are no longer eligible from future sampling. A simple random sample can be attained using a table of random numbers or a computer random number generator. This is something we could do in Excel. Another technique is called stratified random sampling. This is where we divide the population into subgroups called strata based on some characteristic. So for example, we could use gender as a characteristic and divide the population into male, female, and non-binary, or we could also group people by their income level, like low, middle, and high income. Then we would select our simple random sample from each subgroup and then combine them. This technique uses simple random sampling, but within the subgroups or strata. What this technique does is it pulls the same number of items or participants from the strata. So there's an even number represented, 
even though in reality, the groups may be different in size. Another approach is proportional stratified sampling. We won't go into detail here, but what this approach does is that instead of sampling an equal number in each group, we select a number that is proportional to that group within the population. So here is a business example. If we studied banks or financial institutions, we don't really have the same number of large, medium, and small institutions. To have a more even sample from each stratum, we would split our population into three strata, or subgroups for large, medium, and small, and then do a simple random sample of, say, 10 institutions from each stratum. We also have systematic random sampling. So here, we decide how big of a sample we want, denoted by the lowercase n. Then we take the uppercase n, which is the size of the entire population, and we'll take that big N and divide it by our little n, and that will tell us our every k item. Then we will randomly select one item between 1 and k, and then select every k item thereafter. So that was a little complicated. Let's take a look at an example. So let's say we have a population of 12 people, and then we want a sample size of 4. We take our big N of 12 people, divided by a little n of four people. So that will tell us our k item is every third person. Next, I'm gonna randomly pick where to start. And let's say we randomly pick between one and k, and it happens to be number two or the second person. From there, you will count every third person thereafter, and they will be a part of my sample. So going up three gives me the fifth person, and then going up three again gives me the eighth person, Finally, going up three again gives me the 11th person. We have now sampled every third person starting at the number two. Cluster sampling is where we divide the population into several clusters, each representative of the population. This is typically geographical, so when you hear anything related to geography or area, this is your clue that this is a good situation to use cluster sampling. Once the population is clustered, we then select some of the clusters using our simple random sampling, which we discussed earlier. All items in the selected clusters could be used, or we can use only certain items from the cluster using another probability sampling technique. For a business example, let's say a warehouse manager wishes to select a statistical sample of products located across the warehouse. So the warehouse has 10 aisles of bins stacked three high in 20 stacks per aisle. So we've got a total of 10 by three by 20 or 600 bins in the warehouse. Think of each bin as a cluster. So as you can see here, we're working with a geographical location of a bin. And then we could randomly select the clusters or bins and then sample some items from each of these bins. This would be a good technique for Amazon to do if they wanted to double check the organization of the inventory. But again, they don't wanna waste time looking at every item in every bin, so they use cluster sampling. Let's finish with a summary of the different sampling methods. Non-random sampling, which means non-chance processes, which we don't really cover much in this class. Random sampling techniques, which mean every item or participant has the same chance of being selected. In this video, we reviewed simple random, stratified random, systematic, and cluster sampling techniques. We'll be utilizing statistical sampling methods throughout this course. Well, that wraps up this video covering populations, samples, and sampling techniques. In the next video, we'll finish chapter one and discuss data types and data measurement levels.